Sociologists have shown a keen interest in tourism since the turn of the 21st century, when the focus of sociology expanded beyond the themes of work and labour to examine people's leisure activities as well. Sociological inquiry into tourism has primarily been concerned with the role of tourism within modernity, found in the work of key theorists such as Daniel Borstein, Dean McCannell and John Urry. For Borstein, tourism was the natural extension of a society that had grown accustomed to being bombarded with fake and contrived replications of reality, mainly due to the eruption of advertising in the 1950s and 1960s. Boston claimed that in America, the reproduction of an event or an experience had become more thrilling and exciting for people than the experience or the event itself. The obsession with image had led to the construction of what he termed pseudo-events, or events which were staged and constructed purely for the sake of media attention without any intrinsic value of their own. Boston argued that society's obsession with the simulation of reality is a manifestation of people's desire to disengage with the banality, messiness and sometimes even horror of the real world and instead lose themselves in the illusions provided to them by the media. In this context, Boston suggested tourism becomes yet another way for people to access a hyper-real, simulated version of reality that offers all the excitement of travel with none of the problems or grittiness that real travel brings with it. For Boston, Tourism effectively shielded people from the regions that they visit by providing them with a contrived version of the region that replicated what the travellers feel they ought to see and experience instead of the reality. He suggested that tourists experience only an environmental bubble of the comfortable and non-threatening Western Hotel, as well as constructed tourist attractions and activities while remaining isolated from the local people and the environment. In contrast, Dean McCannell claimed that rather than seeking simulation of reality, tourists are actually searching for authenticity when they travel. Like Boston and the early sociologists of tourism, McCannell connected the desire to travel with people's alienation from their labour. Unlike Borstein, though, McCannell did not view tourism as an integral part of modern life, but as an escape from the unease, dysfunctionality and lack of meaningful and authentic connections between people characterising modernity. In other words, McCannell felt that modernity had created an inauthentic world and tourism gave human beings an avenue to disengage from the problems of modernity and re-engage with more authentic and real ways of living through an experience that's akin to a pilgrimage. McCannell does note that this true authenticity is out of the reach of most tourists. He developed the notion of stage tourism to describe the process that followed, whereby local people may stage a display of authentic culture for the tourists in order to appease their desire for a pre-modern authenticity. The real lives of locals occur backstage, out of sight, and they choose how they want their culture to be experienced by tourists through this staged authenticity. McCannell's introduction of the concept of authenticity had wide-ranging impacts on the sociology of tourism at the end of the 20th century. Increasingly, however, the sociological study of tourism has moved away from the question of authenticity, primarily because of two important developments, the postmodern turn in Western tourism and the rise of non-Western tourism. Authors such as George Ritzer and Alan Liska apply Ritzer's McDonaldization thesis to tourism to argue that the desire for fun and enjoyment has become a substitute for authenticity. They use Disney World as an example of a rationalised theme park and suggest that post-tourists seek out inauthentic and artificial environments in order to explore more extreme versions of the simulated reality they've already experienced at home. They add that the McDonaldization of tourism allows tourists to participate in this simulation in predictable, safe and low-risk ways. Another important sociologist in this field is John Urry, who introduced into tourism discourse Foucault's concept of the gaze. In contrast to Boston and McCannell, Ari didn't attempt to explain tourism as a response to the problems of modern life. Instead, Ari located tourism squarely within modernity. He saw it as a positive phenomenon that emerged as a result of labour movements that want holidays for workers and the democratisation and increasing accessibility of travel. He was, however, interested in how Western tourists travelled and, like McCannell, was concerned with the question of authenticity. Ari's tourist gaze can be understood as a set of expectations that tourists place on local populations in the search for having an authentic experience. 
Ari argues that the tourist gaze is created through the tourists wishing to experience something different from their everyday life. Local populations reflect back the gaze by fulfilling the expectations of tourists for the sake of the business they bring with them. The significance of tourism for many countries' economies means that local people are more or less forced into a dynamic where the performance of cultural authenticity becomes necessary for economic reasons. On the plus side, the tourist gaze can also function to enhance ethnic and cultural identity in situations where traditions have been lost or abandoned as a result of the colonial and imperial processes. This tourist gaze has been criticised though for reducing cultural expressions to commodities. The commodification of cultural expression means that some cultural expressions become monetarily more valuable than others, leading to other expressions falling into disuse if they can't attract the same level of tourist interest. The danger then is that the local inhabitants of a tourist destination, the objects of the tourist gaze, perform the cultural patterns and behaviours that satisfy tourists most, while those that don't satisfy tourists disappear. In this sense, tourism becomes a form of colonialism, with wealthy tourists actually shaping the culture and even the everyday life of the places that they choose to visit. In summary, sociological inquiry into tourism has primarily been concerned with the role of tourism within modernity. Second, Daniel Borstein argued that tourism was simply another way for people to access a hyper-real simulated version of reality in order to escape the alienation of modern life. Third, McCannell thought that tourism gave human beings an avenue to disengage from the problems of modernity through what he termed staged authenticity. Fourth, Ritzer and Liska apply the McDonaldization thesis to tourism to argue that tourism is driven by a desire to revel ironically in the hyper-real in a way that's safe, predictable and low risk. Fifth, Ari's tourist gaze can be understood as a set of expectations that tourists impose on local populations in the search for an authentic experience, turning tourism into a new form of colonialism.